of us love food. All of us love food. And not all of us really engage in the art of cooking. But there are a lot of benefits that cooking can bring that most of us do not know. So this workshop is going to help us decipher the benefits of we engaging in the art of cooking. So we know that COVID-19 is wreaking havoc. And the more we step out, the higher the chance of we contracting the virus, right? Experts say that COVID cannot be passed through food. And this makes our topic very interesting. Because even if COVID cannot be passed through food, the process we go through to get this food can make us contract the virus. How cautious are we to the little surfaces that we encounter when we go to this restaurant or eat cheese to buy food? And some may say that, okay, when I go to this restaurant, I sit outside and all that. But Center for Disease Control came up with their May outlet saying that even restaurants that practice outside seating could bring about a higher chance of diners contracting the virus. So in as much as we may not have all the time to cook our food, let's pay attention to these kind of places that we go. At times we do not pay attention to the doorknob, the toilet seat the furniture we sit on, and even shared condiments like pepper shakes or ketchup bottles. How often do these things get sanitized? And even close proximity with restaurant staff could get us the virus. So in as much as we go to these places, let's pay attention that getting COVID doesn't really affect us but there might be loved ones that might be affected by these things. Love starts within us before it is shared across the world, isn't it? I hope you agree with me. Wow. Completely agree, Richard. We are here with you, we're listening to you. You're doing really well. And you're wow. live on Facebook. Wow, that's amazing. So, when we have good health, we will be able to love others and share things across. As well, when we engage in self-cooking, there is less risk for us to have allergies and spend money on them. So it is good for us to cook at home because it is more healthy to do that. One amazing topic for this stress-free summer festival is all about stress management. So definitely I can't talk about food without mentioning how enormous the impact can be when we practice self-cooking. I know those that cook would be like, okay, going back and forth in the kitchen, washing dishes, mopping the floor. How does Self-cooking makes us really stressed. Well, I'm happy to tell you that cooking is an art and a therapy on its own. When you experience heartbreaks, head to the kitchen and come back better off. So Lucy Sanders conducted research on this and shared the experience of how cooking made her feel better. So Cook can help us to release stress. And I'll tell you how this thing happens. Because when you cook, or when you're in the habit of cooking, you prep, you do grocery shopping, you cut, you bake, you correct seasonings, and all these things take up your time. Have you heard of aromatherapy? Does anyone have any idea about aromatherapy? I want you to unmute yourself and share the little knowledge you know about aromatherapy. Imagine you are starting to boil rice. You first boil the water. Take the time 
to inhale the vapor that comes out. You'll be more focused in the kitchen. Just take your time to inhale the vapor that comes out. You pour the rice in the water. The rice has some sweet fragrance, right? Just inhale them. In case you are going to prepare stew, the scent of the spices, like turmeric, curry, pepper, just take the time to inhale them. They calm your nerves. With how you are immersed with the experience of taste, touch, color delight, sizzling. That's the sound that comes out of when we are frying chicken or fish. That sound, when you listen to them and when you go through all this process, it helps you calm your nerves. So that is how cooking can help you release stress. So if you don't even find the reason why you should do your own cooking, some health therapists like Norman Sussman of NYU School of Medicine, when he's drawing up stress reliever activities for his patients who are going through stress, he considers cooking as one of the major activities. When you are in the kitchen, you could tell that your focus is all on the food you are cooking. How you want to get the taste right. You cutting something, you are more careful about it. So you have little time thinking about any other thing, right? So this will tell you that there are no more benefits that we think cooking is all about putting food into your body, but it heals the soul and calms your nerves. Right. Richard. So, as to, okay. I have a question. What do you say to people who say they don't have time to cook? Wow. If you don't have time to cook, First of all, they should realize the health implications of depending your whole life on fast food and restaurants. A lot of research has proven that when you do your own cooking, you become more healthy. Those in the fast food and restaurant have more calories, more sugar. You have the tendency of even becoming obese. Because the art of cooking is also exercise. So I read an article which the lady said that all her life was dependent on fast food. Morning, afternoon, and evening. All she has to do is just order and it will be delivered to her. And she was suffering from depression. And cooking bail her out. And as I'm going on through this worship, I'm going to talk about the financial implication. The benefit of you exploring your creative self. The benefit on the family. So that these people will be convinced that actually cooking, self-cooking does more good to them than they spending their time and life on fast food and restaurants. Mm -hmm. Just want to add one thing to to Miri's comment because I faced the same uh, problem once I was selling nutritionist products about 10 or 11 years ago and people will often say no I don't have the time or I don't have the money uh, but they suffer from disease right so still there is uh, people that are not so aware of the complications of being sick uh, by they getting older, right? So because now they can, we can deal with any disease. Let's say we are young and strong, and you know a lot of, of medical 
things that we can we can go for to heal ourselves but people don't actually think in their future so what could be could be a good way to to help people be more conscious about this like you know that's just my comment that's perfect it's true because when you cook you tend to have uh, the the authority over the ingredients that you use to cook. You know you need some more oil and all that. And even it helps you release uh, or, or reduce the risk of getting allergies, which you go and treat them for. So Maria, that is a great point. I really love the submission. And this leads me to my second point, financial implication of cooking. So at the end of this financial application, I'm going to do some calculations. Over the weekend, I prepared pizza. And I quite realized that the cost involved in me preparing the pizza and buying it is way, way low. So I'll talk about it. But first of all, I want to, I want to get some submissions from you. Have you sat down to do the cost analysis of the food that you usually buy outside when you cook them at home? Can somebody share his or her experience comparing the cost or some cost analysis they did while cooking at home? I was asking that, has anybody done a cost analysis of the food he used or she used oh, outside oh. while she prepared them at home? Have you sat down to do any cost analysis to appreciate the fact that cooking at home is less expensive than cooking outside? Uh, uh, sorry, buying fast food. I hope the question is clear right now. Forbes in 2019 just shared a, an article to the research done by Wellu, which stated that food at restaurants or eateries cost five times higher than the one you cook at home. So this should give an when you broke everything down, especially protein food, pasta, that is bought outside, cost way higher. So those that have prepared, has anybody prepared pizza at home before, homemade pizza? Just type in the comment section. If you prepared homemade pizza before, type in the comment section. So a number of you. Okay, four, five people. Wow. So I made a cost analysis over the pizza that I prepared over the week. And I'm going to convert everything into dollars so that everybody can relate with it. Yes. Pizza in my area cost $6.93. Yes. And that is for the least size. The smallest size in it cost $6.93. And when I did my pizza, I did three pizzas that day. But I'm going to break down just one, the cost of preparing just one. And I do my grocery shopping in bulk so I could go to the market just once or twice a week to do my grocery shopping. So my pizza sauce costed $0.035. You could write down the cost. My pizza sauce costed $0.035. And the gizzard I used cost $0.175. The flour I used cost zero point zero eight six dollars. 
the green pepper I used cost 0 0.086 dollars, same as the onions. Now the mozzarella cheese cost 0 0.7 dollars. The sausage I used cost 0 0.175 dollars. And adding oil, yeast, sugar, and salt costed $0.035. In total, this pizza cost less than $2. That is $1.38. So you could tell how much I've saved by preparing my own pizza. It could be of a huge financial benefit when you consider self-cooking. I hope you followed the calculations. Just type in the comment section. Fine. So if people are not considering cooking at home to save their money, because in COVID era, a lot of people have lost their jobs or had a decrease in pay. So it's better to cook at home. Now I explain your creative self with cooking. Why would you consider a garnish food over another while this same food is cooked by one person? So it relates with the point that I'm going to make that garnishing enhances the entire eating experience. And it rekindles the psychological aspect of our being when we are with the food that we are going to eat. So today I'm in this workshop, I'm going to garnish food. I'm going to show the techniques in garnishing the food. Because when it comes to garnishing, it makes all cooks artists. You have to know the right color, the right plate to use, the size of the plate, and all that. And it makes us pause and admire our own food. Yes. So with garnishing, I'm going to demonstrate it. But first, when you want to garnish, there are so many things you can use for garnishing. You can use fruits, herbs, vegetables. But it depends on the kind of food that you are serving. But this is going to be like serving a food that you are going to eat ourselves. And you don't just place anything at any side of the plate. It needs technique. So as we spend our summer and spend time at home, let's try out to garnish food because it makes you appreciate colors and shapes together with what works best. So one, in garnishing a food, I'm going to talk about one of the techniques. You have to choose a perfect plate. You consider the size of the plate. That's the canvas, the medium in which you are coming to plate our food. You consider the color of the plate. Because if you use the right color, it will bring out the garnishing you've made with regards to the color combination. And secondly, when you are plating a food, consider the plate as a clock, a wall clock. Then, when plating the protein, protein must be between three and nine. I hope you have the clock in your mind, right? So even if you're in your room, you could look at the wall clock. So protein between three and nine. Then your vegetables, or let me go to the carbohydrate. The carbohydrate between nine and 12. Then the vegetables between 12 and three. I hope you can all recollect this simple process. Type in the comment section. That's fine. So now, I'm coming to do a demonstration of how to plate a food. 
So I need to wash my hand. So these are the items I have put in here. I have carbohydrates. Putin is the fish. Carbohydrate, which is potatoes. I have carrots here, my vegetables. This sweet corn. This lettuce and cucumber. Then I have my lemon. So first, we plate the the protein. But because the protein is white, I need to lay foundation for it first. I need to lay foundation. So this is my plate. This is my canvas. We said protein is between nine and three. So somewhere here, right? Nine year, three year, nine year. Lay a foundation for it. And one technique is when using sauce or runny substances, you put them at the base, like puree and, and cool. You put them at the base to so avoid them running on the food or on the plate when you serve them. So I have my ketchup here. Okay. The and then plate my fish, which is the protein. Now I go to the carbohydrates. Carbohydrate is supposed to be between nine and 12, right? Okay. So this is nine and 12, nine and 12. So now my vegetables. So we are going to use the packing bag, which is between 12 and 3.
Now my final lap is my Another technique is the kiwi can just dot around it for them to have a little piece of it. So let me add a little dot to give it a little bit of color. and wipe around the plate. So friends, you see how I did the plating. You could try this at home. Not, not just plating everything at any side of the plate, but rather just have a canvas and work around it. Wow. So friends, uh, I can't talk about food and leave out the impact on family and kids. I'll let you have your questions being asked and answered. But cooking with your family and with your spouse have enormous impact in bonding the family, especially kids. One little story about me, when I was a kid, I started cooking at the age of seven. Even before that, I used to do some little cooking with kids, cutlery and utensils. And I served the food. The first food I cooked was yam and cabbage stew with chicken at the age of seven. And I served it for my mother. She tasted the food and was like, this is brilliant. This comment, I can't forget it because it has really helped me. And that's why I've even passed through the stage to even give this watch. So involving children in cooking is so great. Make cooking feel like a place of adventure and not a chore. Let them have joyful experiences with tastes and senses. It impacts them. Because they get to differentiate between textures as they handle vegetables and other food stuff. Also, make it feel like it's a collaborative activity. As they taste the food, you correct the seasoning. As they wash the vegetables, you do the chopping. So it makes them feel part of the process. And anytime you want them to come to the kitchen, they feel excited about it because it's the place for them to learn something new. But if you want to introduce cooking to the kids and be like, anytime you finish cooking, they should come and wash the dishes or do the mopping. They see the kitchen as a place of stress and no place to learn something new. Secondly, when you involve kids in cooking, it helps you to pass on family recipe because children learn a lot through observation. You could all agree with me. So as you teach them the process, it helps you pass it on from one generation to other. And if your lifestyle is all about fast food, the children will also grow up appreciating fast food because that is what their parents have taught them. Another way is everybody will love their child to be smart, isn't it? You definitely love that. But I have a good news for you. Cooking could help you impact your child with mathematics, science, English, planning, and finishing projects together with organizing. Imagine when I was doing this garnishing, 
with a child. You could see that a carrot is square. The cucumber and the lemon is semicircle. The child picks it up. That's mathematics. You could say if you are cooking with a child, it could be like fetch me three cups of water or a half cup of flour. Simple division and addition. When it comes to vocabulary, I say something like sizzling sound. The child learns it, greeting, needing, and all that. And when we are cooking, we control the heat so that the food doesn't burn, right? We check the temperature when it is right for us to put the chicken in the hot oil. And checking timing. This is basic science, changing color of the food. I hope you could not agree with me. And when you follow a recipe and you complete it, you teach the child how to start and finish projects, how to be organized, because you plan the grocery shopping together with your child. And one thing too is when you involve your child in cooking and the child feels the collaboration vibe, they tend to have a long chat with you. They will tell you about their experiences at school and all that. And I bet you, any question that you ask this child, they are going to answer because they see you as a buddy, they see you as a friend. So kitchen is a nice place to start bonding with your child and teaching the child a lot of things. When was the last time you cooked with your spouse? I'm jumping into that topic. Can you type in the comment section in a week? In a week, how often do you cook with your spouse? Okay. So, Research has shown that cooking with family strengthens family bond. You could not agree with me. And doing the planning with family makes them appreciate how to criticize because you tend to agree and disagree about recipes. How to give good criticism, how to agree with somebody, how to collaborate. And it makes the connection really works well in the family. But if your family is not doing that, I could suggest something to you. Maybe once a week or twice, you could be like, okay, you are busy and going after work and all that. But you could designate a day in a week for a particular food. Let me say pizza Sunday. That is where the family come together to share their idea about the food. So this particular food, those in Africa will be like, Fufu Sandy, that's the local food in Africa. Fufu, Fufu Sandy. So when it is every Sunday, the family knows that they are coming to, they are coming together to prepare this particular food. So you could add to your to-do list or the new plan or new schedule of the family. This would help you have an amazing time together. I want this is so. Let me say. This is what cooking can bring to us when we engage in cooking. Practice aromatherapy. Cook with your family. This is a time to point. Save money by self-cooking and have a healthy life. Because as we seek a peaceful world, children really learn from observation. And we could all agree that family is the basic foundation of everything. As we seek a stress-free summer and have a lovely world, let's take the time to have a good health, explore our creative self, true family cooking, and I bet you we could make the world a better place through the art of cooking. So friends, if you have any question or any submission, let me have it in the comment section and I'll answer them duly. Thank you so much for joining. I love you all. Thank you.